Hello everyone, welcome to our course of a glimpse of Chinese culture. In the first section, please join us to have an overview of China. China is a vast land with various landforms, different clap zones, and a large numbers of rivers and lakes. As one of the four oldest recorded civilizations in the world, China has a long history without being interrupted. From ancient times till now, Chinese people consisting of people of the Han nationality, other ethnic groups, have been living on the vast land, creating and developing her unique culture. Firstly, let's talk about national symbols. Before we start, let me ask you a question. When was the People's Republic of China founded? Yes, it was on October 1st, 1949. So the Chinese celebrate 1st October as the National Day. Here is a picture of our national flag. On 27 September 1949, the first plenary session of the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference, abbreviated as CPPCC, approved the proposal for using the red five-star flag as our national flag. The red color of the flag symbolizes revolution. The yellow color of the stars represents the golden brilliant rays radiating from the vast red land. The design of our four small stars surrounding a bigger one signifies the unity of the Chinese people under the leadership of the Communist Party of China, abbreviated as CPC, Zhongguo Gongchandang. This is a picture of our national emblem. On 18 June 1950, the second session of the first CPPCC National Committee adopted the design and illustration of the national emblem of the PRC. On 20 September that year, Chairman Mao Zedong ordered the promulgation of the national emblem. The five star on the emblem have the same meaning as those on the national flag. The golden cogwheel represents the workers. The ears of grain represent the peasants. The combination of them represents the worker-peasant alliance led by the working class of China. The whole emblem symbolizes the new democratic revolution of the Chinese people since the 4th May movement in 1919 and the birth of New China under the People's Democratic Dictatorship led by the working class on the basis of the worker-peasant alliance. The national anthem of the People's Republic of China is the March of the Volunteers, Yi Yong Jun Jin It was written in 1935 with lyrics by poet Tian Han and music by the composer Nie Er, honoring those who went to the front to fight the Japanese invaders in the northeast China in the 1930s. Decided upon as the Provincial National Anthem of New China on 27 September 1949, at the first plenary session of the CPPCC. But the song was officially adopted as the national anthem of the PRC on 4th December 1982 by the National People's Congress, abbreviated as NPC, and here is the lyrics of China's national anthem. The English version is as follows. Now let's read together. Arise, we who refuse to be slaves, with our very flesh and blood, let us build our great wall. The peoples of China are at the most critical time. Everybody must roar defiance. Arise, arise, arise. Millions of hearts with one mind. Breathe the enemy's gunfire. March on. Breathe the enemy's gunfire. March on. March on. March on. on. The last national symbol is our national capital. 
On 27 September 1949, the first plenary session of the CPPCC unanimously adopted the resolution making Beiping, renamed Beijing as of the day capital of the PRC. Beijing is not only the nation's capital center, but it also serves as economic, scientific, cultural and educational heart. As one of the famous Asian capital cities in China, Beijing is famous for its many places of historic interest and scenic beauty like the Forbidden City, the Temple of Heaven, which is the platform for the Ming and the Qing empires to perform sacrifices and solemn rites. Here is the Summer Palace, the Ming Tombs, the Badaling section of the Great Wall. In the next part, let's talk about the geography of China. And here is a world map. Can you find China on this map? Do you know how to describe the location of China in English? From the picture we know, China is located in the east of the Asian continent, on the western shore of the Pacific Ocean. So how big is it? The PRC has a land area of about 9.6 million square kilometers and is the third largest country in the world, next only to Russia and Canada. China is a country of varied topographic features with highlands in the west and plains in the east. Mountainous land and very rough terrains make up about 67% of China's territory. Basins and plains, about 33%. China also abounds with rivers. Most of the large rivers have their source on the Qinghai Tibet Plateau and drop greatly between source and mouth. China's rivers can be characterized as exterior and interior system. The catchment of the exterior river that empty into the oceans accounts for 64% of the country's total land area. The catchment of the interior rivers that flow into the inland lakes or disappear into marshes or deserts makes up about 36 of the China's total land area. The Yangtze River is the longest river in China and the third longest river in the world. China's second longest river, you know what? It is Yellow River. It is also seen as the cradle of Chinese civilization and the spiritual home of the Chinese people. Scattered throughout China are approximately 2,800 natural lakes, most of which are found on the middle Lower Yangtze Plain and Qinghai Tibet Plateau. The Poyang Lake is in the north of Jiangxi province, is the largest of the freshwater lakes, and the Qinghai Lake, in the northeast of Qinghai province, is the largest of the saltwater lakes. Apart from the natural rivers and lakes, there are also many man-made canals. What is the most famous one in China? The most famous is the Grand Canal between Beijing and Hangzhou more than 1,700 kilometers in length. And here is a question for you. Why did people build canal in the past? What was it for? The Grand Canal between Beijing and Hangzhou was firstly constructed in spring and autumn period in ancient China for the purpose of military action. Gradually, it played an important role in providing irrigation water for the farmland on both sides, facilitating trade between the south and the north, and was regarded as the country's transportation and information highway before the advent of the railway. Nowadays, travelers from home and abroad also find pleasure in taking cruise tours down the canal. Most of China lies in the North Temperate Zone. Characterized by a warm climate and distinctive seasons, a climate well suited for habitation. Okay, that is what we have learned in this section. The national symbols, 
and Chinese geography. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you and see you next time.